Good morning, champions. Today is an unusual service. So we expect to encounter the author of love. Whatever it is you have come with, just put it aside and know that the weight of his glory has a way of displacing things. And you're going to go back, not the same man and woman that walked in here, but another man and woman who has encountered he so have beloved. Welcome to the assembly of God's chosen instrument. Turn to the person seated closest to you and summon back our neighbor. Say, neighbor, you are chosen to be a safe place of shelter. Say to the one on the other side, say, neighbor. You are chosen to be a safe place of shelter. Say to yourself, say, I am God's choice. You know, when, when God spoke to Ananias concerning Paul, he said, go, for he is my, my chosen instrument to proclaim my name before kings, before the Israelites, and before the Gentiles. We have been chosen to demonstrate his love before the nations. First Corinthians chapter 13 verse 7. We are still on our series on begotten of love. <laughs> it says, love bears all things. I'll read from the New King James Version, the New International Version, and the Passion Translation. Because I feel these three um, different versions actually captures the original Greek so I'll read them and then so as I explain, you understand. New King James says, love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Um, first, New International Version says, love always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. And my favorite is the Passion Translation. It says, love is a safe place of shelter for it never stops believing the best for others. Love never takes failure as defeat for it never gives up. As it is our tradition, we are not going to try given our time to talk about the whole verse. So our focus for today is love bears all things. Love always protects. The first one, love is a safe place. Of shelter. When you look at the Greek word that is translated, bears all things, a safe place of shelter, always protect, and all those things, never gives up depending on what translation you are holding. It's a word called stego, which comes from another that actually means the roof. Now I want us to look up because Paul is drawing our attention to the roof of a building. And when you look at the roof of this building, you discover that the building covers and, in, and the building covers and protects the house. And in covering closely, in protecting the house, or it, it provides support and conceals whatever is happening here in this, in this time of drone. If there's any prying eyes hovering up there because of the roof sheltering, because of the roof covering, because of the roof protecting, literally protects it from the harsh weather conditions. It protects it from the sun. If, it, if it's scorching or not, you don't feel it because you are here. It protects from torrential rain. You don't feel it because you are under here. It protects from the storm. Should a tree fall, it's not going to be on your head. It will be on the roof. So now, Paul is drawing our attention to a love that acts as a roof. A love that protects a love that supports, a love that covers, a love that shelters, a love that bears all things. No matter how hot the sun is, this roof stands. No matter how powerful and the downpour is, this roof stands. No matter how windy it is, this roof stands. So when, we, when Paul says love bears all things, the word there is actually telling us that the love of God is like a roof. It acts as a roof 
for everyone within the sphere of the influence of love. So what does it mean for love to act as a roof? I've actually already summarized it. Well, let's try to explain it. One, it is a love that covers and conceals. A love that acts as a roof is a love that is big on confidentiality. Paul says, love bears, bears all things. Not love bears all things. Love does not expose or exploit the weaknesses of others. It does not lie about their existence either. What it does it do, is that it protects, it hides the faults of others and covers their frailties, not by lying, but by refusing to emphasize them. Love does not focus on what is wrong on the other person, but bears with the shortcomings of others. Love is ready to make allowances for others' faults. So in covering, in concealing, you, you know that this is how this person is. And because you know, you don't go about broadcasting it. Because you care deeply, love cares deeply for people and therefore refuses to publicize that which will ruin their good name. This roof conceals whatever is happening here. Whatever you are doing in your house, your neighbor does not know because the roof covers it. Love that acts as a roof. Just like the roof of our houses covers us, love throws a blanket of silence over what is displeasing in another person. Because as you draw closer in relationships, the closer you are to me, the more you will see the woman. Say, oh, woman of God, when you come closer, you will see the woman first before you reach the God. And then I'll get to see you. And so the more you get closer to a person, whether it is in a marital relationship, in a work relationship, you're going to notice the flaws, the frailties, the failures of that person. Love acts as a roof in that it does not go about publicizing and talking about what he has seen. It just simply covers and conceals. This roof does not deny your existence here. You are here, but should there be a drone up, they cannot see you because the roof covers Love. The love of God in us has no appetite for, for gossip. Some of us are just, just have the taste. We just have a taste for gossip. Love does not gossip and it does not listen to gossip. This is not about covering the sin. This is about protecting the sinner. When I was a teenager, my pastor those days would say, separate the man from the act. We have to remember that in dealing with sin, we have to intentionally remove the man from the act hate the sin but by all means love the sinner when Paul says love acts as a roof the second thing I want to point out is that he's talking about a love that is supportive and loyal for those of us that have traveled out and come and, and are back this roof was here before you left it's still here we've had different seasons this year this roof is here Hamatan is coming this roof will be here. When you have a friend that loves, that has the love of God and loves you like a roof, you can be sure that one person will be in your corner throughout the different seasons of your life. Love acts as a roof. It protects our relationships from the storms of life. Love, this is what the idea in the King James captures when he says love bears all things. It takes a person who genuinely loves you to bear all under everything and anything that may come your way. That's, that person sees your fault, sees your humanity, sees the things you do, but just loves you anywhere. He's not denying that you are not very truthful. He's not denying that you're not very good with money. But he knows that you are not very good with money and he lives with you and relates with you with understanding. So he keeps money away from you so that we don't have issues. And loves you away from the fact that you are not very good with money. So love, when Paul says love bears all things, he's talking about a love that acts as a roof. And I'm saying the second one, that love looks like a supportive and a loyal love. If I don't love you, I will not patiently accept the frailties that accompany your humanity. There's nothing you will tell me. If I do not love you, I will not accept your humanity. I will not accept whatever things I notice in your life. It takes loyalty to cover another's fault, another's flaws, and protect their names. It takes loyalty to not be focused on the sins and weaknesses of others. It takes loyalty to not poke fun 
at another person's weakness. It takes loyalty to stop finding fault. The third thing I want to point out to us is that a love that acts as a roof actually shelters and protects. That should have been the first, but I deliberately brought it last. The Passion Translation that we read said, Love is a safe place of shelter. To be a safe place of shelter is to become like a roof in protecting and shielding the people with whom you relate daily from ridicule, from harm, from exposure. Because you are close, you can see me. And then, and because you love me, you refuse to go and say what you can see about me. You are protecting me. You're shielding me from exposure. You're, you're protecting my name. We are begotten of love to be a safe place of shelter. Some of us who are married need to ask God to forgive us for failing to shield and protect our spouses. We have ruined the good names of our spouses due to our intense focus on their flaws and their faults. So we sit everywhere and we discuss our wives. We go everywhere and we discuss our husbands. And when people see them, they actually wish that these men or these women who are married to us will die so that we can be released from their bondages. So for, for those of us that are married, today is just a day to sit and ask God, forgive me for all the times I had not walked in love with my husband. I had not, been, had not walked in love with my wife. Because every time you say something that is not beautiful about your spouse to another, what you're doing is that your love is not acting as a roof. You just uncovered what you saw and told the world, this man, we are begotten of love to demonstrate love. Imagine if God, our father, shared our weaknesses with everyone who became close and intimate with him. Imagine that every time I went to pray with God, the closer I got to him, he started telling me, see, Father Patrick, you see, Pastor Jackson, Imagine if God shared our weaknesses. So some of us who are parents need to repent of our failure to be a safe place of shelter to our children. You cannot forget they are children. My mother used to say, you will change. The neighbors will not forget. And so every time we misbehave, she was more, she was more um, intentional about ensuring that your misbehavior was inside the house than outside he said, I will forget because I know this is not you. You are growing. But you and the neighbors will not forget. So every time somebody misbehaves, she will pull you inside. Go and do whatever you want to do inside. When your head comes down, you can come outside. Some of us stand at the junction, at the market, in churches, in public places, and call your sons and daughters the names that should some other person call them, you should actually prepare and go take permission from heaven and go for a fight. But you're the one calling them. You're the one naming them. You remind them that they were barely three when they started stealing from the pot. And the neighbors are hearing. You forget that that was a child. You're, you have felt, we have felt as parents to be a safe place of shelter to our children because we are tearing down their reputation with our words. We are tearing down their opportunities. Tomorrow, this one's son wants to marry, say, don't go. That child has been stealing from age two. I don't want a thief in my bloodline. And who labeled the child th thief? The very mother, the very father who brought that child to planet Earth. So it's, it's a day where we sit and just tell God, forgive us, for we have failed in our love in parenting to bear all things. Love always protects. We have not protected our children. We have failed in the place of loving, of forgiving, of protecting, of making allowances for the humanity and childishness of our children while praying for them to grow out of it. This also goes for the children. So children, listen up. My father used to say, You are a child, you are not a little ear. So you can hear, you can understand. The things you see about your parents are not, they are not top, topics of discussion in school. Daddy and mommy fought. Or mommy and dad, whatever it is, you know. Because you are their children, you know, you are their child. There are things you see. It is not something to go to the classroom and start discussing with your friend. Once you, with your friends, what, once you do that, you have exposed your parents, exposed your home to ridicule. And so the next time anybody sees your father, your friend sees your father, they can walk past. Because you had told them. 
what happens in your house. Love protects. You have respect of your parents. Demand respect for your parents demands that you shut up in public about those things that are not beautiful that is happening at home. Respect for your parents means that you cannot use their issues, their misunderstandings to make fun in class. Respect for your parents demands that you know what to say, what, to, what not to say. And if you are bothered, if you are big enough to talk, you are big enough to pray. If you can make fun in class, you can definitely pray on your knees. <laughs> Noah had three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. One day, Shem saw, Ham saw the father's nakedness and went and laughed, talked to the brothers about it. The brothers didn't find it funny. They took a garment, walked backward, and covered the parents, the father's nakedness. Their actions got them blessed. Ham's actions got him cursed. Everything you do brings blessing or curses, whether your parents are aware of it or not. Love protects. Love covers. Love acts as a roof. Your daddy and mommy are not topics of discussion in school, in classrooms, anywhere. For those of us that are grown up, and I listen to some public speakers and I'm like, excuse me, you're talking about your parents. Know when it is an example and when it is a, a matter of exposure and ridicule. Because sometimes in the process of trying to make people to show to make people see that we are really vulnerable which when you are really vulnerably communicates vulnerability but when you are not because you're trying to sell stories to show that you have walked through certain parts we put our parents in light and forget that that is all they knew if they knew better they would have acted better the faults and the flaws you notice in the lives of others in the lives of your parents are not for public discussion. If you can talk about it, remember, you can pray. For all of us, whether it is, we say, I'm not married, I'm not a child, I'm not this, but you have a friend. It's so easy to maintain the confidence of someone that is still in your good books. The moment the person steps away, or you will have a misunderstanding, you bear it all. You forget that love bears all things. It does not bear all things. You just say it all. You fail, we have failed to be a safe place of shelter to our friends. We betray the confidence of our so-called friends at the drop of a hat, especially when there is a change in dynamics of the relationship. Sometimes it is easy to cover the flaws of a friend than to cover the flaws of an ex-friend. I just explained that. We have to come to that place in our growth where we are driven and governed by love, that we keep our, we keep our mouths shut on whatever we see, whatever we know, Whatever we hear about another that is not beautiful. It doesn't have to come from you. Say they will still know. Let them know. Let it not come from your mouth. We are God's chosen instrument. He chose Paul to proclaim his message to the Gentiles. And he did. He has chosen us to display his love before the nations. He has appointed us to manifest his love. So as we relate with people, be it outside our homes, in our neighborhoods, in the church, in the marketplace, in schools, sometimes we gossip in the name of prayer topics. You know you are trying to tell people about the person and you raise it as a prayer topic. I'm a pastor's daughter. You know what I'm talking about. It is important that as beings of love, we grow to become people others can trust in our inner circles with whatever information we have about them. This is not a call to push things under the rock or to pretend that black is white. This is a call to become an embodiment of safety and protection for the people we relate with, be it at home or at work. For love chooses to relate with the beloved directly and intentionally shelters them from exposures that can be injurious to them. It is human to take pleasure in the sin of others. It is human to want to be the one to share the bad news. That is actually what makes our, our tabloids and stuff to sell. It's what drives traffic. We want to be the first person to say we caught him in adultery. As men and women begotten of the God who is love, we must become people who care much about the feelings and welfare of the people around us. So even as you sit here, I want you to look into your own life and ask yourself, how much attention do I pay to other people when they are not feeling, failing or sinning? 
when people are not failing and they are not sinning, how much time do I give to them? How much time do I spend celebrating greatness in other people? Compare the time you spend celebrating greatness in somebody with the time you spend talking about the failures, the flaws, the fail, frailties of, of, of another person. And then we will know where the, the scale tips on our balance of love. Love in bearing all things, supports like this roof, supports whatever is placed on top of it and covers whatever is placed under it. If we build relationships on love, they, they will stand. If we put the chronic misdeeds of our spouse under love, it will be covered. Whatever you build on love is sure to stand. Whatever you put under love is sure to be covered. May we be men and women who will be known for our love. Rise as we take our confessions this morning. Say with me, I am the God begotten. My conduct points men to my paternity. Say it like you understand. I am an instrument of God's love. I dispense God's love to others. I am a safe place of shelter to everyone around me. The love of God in me protects, shields, guards, those within my sphere. I am God's messenger of love. My life is a daily display of the love of God. I am begotten of love to manifest love. I help in carrying the burdens of others. I am the personal assistant of the King of Glory. The love of God in me dispels the darkness around me. I am not a person who betrays the confidence of another. I am trustworthy. I am forgiving. I am loyal. I am a follower of Christ. I am his representative in my sphere. I can love as he loves. And forgive as he has forgiven me. I am God's instrument of love. He uses me to sow seeds of his love within my sphere. I am a channel of blessing to others. God's love flows through me. I desire deeply to simply be known by my love for God and for others. I am an ambassador of the love of God. I carry the message of Christ to my world. I love people without an agenda. I am always on the lookout for the well-being of other people. I make allowances for other people's humanity. I put away all bitterness and wrath and anger along with all malice. The power of God works mightily within me to love as he loves. As Christ is, so am I in this world. Just want us to raise our hands and ask God, may we be a people that are known by your love, reflecting and flowing through us. The Lord, make me your instrument of love. Let your love flow through me freely. Let your love flow through me freely.